Today's topic is immigration. We will look at America as a place for new beginnings for millions of people immigrating into the country during the 19th century. Factory jobs in Western lands drew some, and a political voice and religious freedom drew many more. Eventually, many Americans would resent these immigrants who came to be viewed as a threat to American culture and the American workplace. In the 19th century, America served as a potential land of opportunity for people across the world. Millions of immigrants came to America from Europe, Asia, the Caribbean, and Mexico, believing America offered them freedom and a better life for their families. America offered political and religious freedom compared to the autocratic governments that many immigrants were used to. Jews in Russia experienced persecution during the pogroms in the 19th century, and America's First Amendment seemed like a breath of fresh air for many. The government in the United States was elected by the people, again, a new idea for people coming to America. America also had many new factories opening up after the Civil War, and many acres of land to be settled in the West, which was given out through the Homestead Act. All of these served as factors for driving people towards America. The immigrants who came to America in the 19th century played a big role in the development of American industry and the growth of American cities, and they did this for low pay and usually in dangerous working conditions. Chinese immigrants played a vital role in building the Transcontinental Railroad. Immigrants filled northeastern textile factories in big cities like New York and steel mills in, in the northeast. Remember, Pittsburgh was the center of the steel industry, the home of Carnegie Steel. And the dangerous work in coal mines was done by Italians, Poles, and Slavs. Slavic peoples are people who come um, from eastern and southeastern Europe, Slavic people are people from Russia, the Ukraine, Serbia, Bulgaria, Croatia, the Czech Republic, and many other places in Eastern Europe and the Balkan Peninsula. While there had always been people immigrating to America, we can break early American immigration into two major eras, old immigration and new immigration. The time frame for old immigration was approximately 1820 to 1870. Those who came to America during this time were primarily from Northern and Eastern Europe, places like England, France, and Germany. Many of these immigrants could speak English or would learn relatively quickly. Their dress was similar to Americans. They were literate and many were skilled workers, so they arrived able to do a trade. These individuals would have very few issues fitting in when they arrived in the United States, as they were already very culturally similar to Americans. New immigration was primarily between 1871 and 1921. Most of these people who came during this time came from Southern and Eastern Europe and Asia, places like Italy, Greece, Russia, China, and Japan. These individuals tended to be poor, illiterate. They came from autocratic governments. Autocratic governments are governments controlled by a single individual. Uh, they brought many different languages and many different religions. They settled in American cities near factories, and about a quarter of these immigrants were what is called birds of passage, which were immigrants who came to America to earn money for a time and then return the money to their home country. What made it easier for people to come to America in the 19th century was cheap transatlantic travel on steamships. This allowed poor immigrants, no, not him, he dies, yeah, them, to come to America, oftentimes in the most uncomfortable parts of the ship, to settle the West and work in American factories. Immigrants coming to America would normally pass through Ellis Island in New York Harbor. But before arriving there, they saw the Statue of Liberty, a gift from, from the French that was completed in 1886, which became a symbol for what many thought America had to offer. As Emma Lazarus's poem says, which is found on the statue's pedestal, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore, Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me, I lift up my lamp beside the golden door. It does not ask for the richest and the brightest, it seems to be willing to take all comers. And this is how the, those who flooded into America in the last part of the 19th century into the 20th century viewed America. Ellis Island was the major immigration center on the East Coast. 17 million people entered the United States through Ellis Island, between the years 1892 and 1924. And there were standards for those entering the country. There was a, there was a medical examination. They, immigrants had to possess the proper documents and they had to pay an entry tax 
before being allowed to enter the United States. Angel Island and San Francisco Bay served a similar purpose on the West Coast. In America comes to be known as the melting pot, many cultures blending together to make America. The expectation was for the cultures to assimilate, assimilate meaning to give up their culture and accept American culture. And in the 19th century, immigrants, immigrants were expected to learn English and act like Americans. They were expected to become citizens. If any of this sounds familiar to current conversations on immigration in the 21st century, you've been paying attention. Immigrants were processed at Ellis Island and had many hurdles that they had to get over. They had to find jobs and a place to live. They had to integrate themselves into an unfamiliar culture and an unfamiliar land. But it was also important for them to maintain their own heritage from their homelands. To do this, they established ethnic neighborhoods in the many cities that they moved into. Chinatowns and Little Italy's popped up across the United States. Their kids went to school together, they went to church together, and they had newspapers that reported local news and news from their home country. These ethnic neighborhoods made it easier for immigrants to adapt to, to life in America. And the institution that played a very big role in this transition was public schools, as they provided an avenue for students to learn English to be, and to be exposed to American culture. Many Americans did not welcome these immigrants, and they were known as nativists. Nativism is opposition to immigrants and anyone who is not born in the United States. They favored Native Americans, people born in America, but not the Native Americans as we understand the phrase. Whites and African Americans viewed immigrants as a threat to their jobs, as they feared that, that immigrants would be willing to work for cheaper and drive down wages and possibly take their job. Religion also emerged as an argument against immigrants as the number of Jews, Catholics, and Buddhists increased in the 19th century, which conflicted with the many Protestant sects that were found across the United States. Nativists wanted to limit immigration. They claimed that the languages, customs, religions, and ideas of immigrants were a threat to the American way of life. They believed that they, who were born in the United States and Protestant, were superior, and they believed that these were characteristics that defined Americans. Labor unions were among the most prominent nativists, as they argued that unskilled workers from other countries took jobs from native-born Americans because they were willing to work for less. Let's close the show by looking at ways the United States Congress restricted immigration. Passed in 1882, the Chinese Exclusion Act banned the entry of Chinese workers into the United States for 10 years. It was extended for another 10 years in 1892, and in 1902, it was extended indefinitely and it was, until it was repealed in 1943. This act severely limited Chinese entry into the United States. The Emergency Quota Act of 1921 put quotas on the number of immigrants who could enter the country from all parts of the world except for those immigrants coming from Northwestern Europe, basically those who came as part of old immigration. The Immigration Restriction Act of 1924 imposed even stricter quotas and limited the total number of immigrants who could enter the United States. This act also banned immigrants from East Asia. The purpose of these laws was to reverse American immigration policy and change the types of immigrants who came to the United States. Those from France, England, and Germany were preferred to those from Greece, Russia, and Japan. In one interesting note on immigration, there were few, if any, limitations put on immigrants coming from Latin America and Canada, especially Mexican immigrants who were needed for farming in the Southwest. The progressives are on deck, and until then, good night, Albuquerque.